I have a perfect life. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster, and honor guest. I not only have a perfect life, I love to talk about a perfect life. <laughs> I love to write about a perfect life. And the number one question I get when I start talking about a perfect life is, is that even possible? <laughs> I mean, we've gone all our life hearing, well, nobody's perfect. Nothing's perfect. You can never be perfect. Perfection is just a goal that you can shoot at, but you can't ever really get there. Well, there are several facets to having a perfect life, and someday we'll get to talk about all of them. <laughs> but number one is, people have said, if you're searching for something, how will you know if you find it if you don't know what it looks like? So the first thing you need to do is figure out in your mind, what does a perfect life look at, look like? So, bear with me for a moment. Imagine, think, what would you put on a cover if you were helping you write a book called Your Perfect Life? What would you put on the cover? And if marketing people have done your job, I can probably guess pretty close to what you might think. Maybe looking out over a beautiful mountain vista. Better yet, a beach, Caribbean beach, perfect sand, filled with all your friends, trim, young, perfect people, <laughs> with perfect smiles, Perfect hair. Wait a minute. You guys are looking at me saying, this guy does not have a perfect life because he does not meet that criteria. Well, thanks a lot. But I'll tell you, I do have a perfect life. I've already told you that. And the reason I say that is because that's not the criteria for a perfect life. What we're imagining is a reward. Sometimes we work really, really hard and we treat ourselves to the things like we imagine. But that's not a sustainable life. We realize that stress kills us, but having no stress in life kills us just as fast. We need to recognize that a perfect life is a life with challenges, with problems. So don't forget about that. And the jump to perfection, which sounds like so far away, is not that hard. I love something that Wayne Dyer says. He says, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. He said, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. We are, like our family, whether we like it or not, we are from what we come from. We come from God. We are in God's image. That is our source. We come from a perfect start. But, and I don't remember signing this contract, but evidently when we come into being human, we sign an agreement to have a whole bunch of baggage come with us. <laughs> and one guy that's in charge, his name is Ego. And he comes along too. And... You can recognize them because all our horrible things that we think sometimes, all the bad things, especially fear, come from him. Sometimes he's referred to as the shadow. And I think that's an excellent description because he's always hiding in the shadows till we just don't need him, and then he jumps out. I'll share a brief story. This happened so long ago I can barely remember it. But in 1501, <laughs> a young sculptor who was only 26 years old received a commission to take an old block of marble that had been sitting outside for a couple of years after somebody else started this job and quit. But he got this job, and for two years, this sculptor, Mike, started carving away <laughs> on this big rock. And after two years, well, you know him as Michelangelo, but he finally finished this statue for the religious figure, David. And it was beautiful, it was amazing. And he went on to do other things, I guess. But he created this statue, which even today is considered by many to be the most beautiful statue of all time, known as the David. When you put the in front of the name, it's a big deal. And someone asked him, they said, Mike, they said, tell you, when you created this perfect statue, how difficult was it? And he said, he said in Italian, but I'll tell you in English, he said, it really wasn't that hard. David was already in the stone, and all I had to do was remove all the parts that was not David. And once I removed that, there was nothing left but David. It was easy. Right for you! <laughs> Wouldn't happen if I did it the same way. But not only did Michelangelo come up with this perfect statue, I think he also came up with the model for how we have a perfect life. We need to create a quest. And this quest is to remove everything that is not part of our authentic self, our spiritual self that we begin with. Some people call that our highest self, our authentic self. If we remove all the things that are not part of that, the 
unauthentic self, the false self, a.k.a. the ego. If we get rid of that, and he does not like being gotten rid of, I will tell you that right now, <laughs> what we're left with is our perfect self. Now, sometimes we need tools to clean out these things that are not ourselves. They are the challenges we face in life. When I was only 12 years old, my dad got sick and he died. That affected me. That was hard. It was painful, but I got through, and it shaped who I was. We have big challenges in life that make big changes in who we are. Sometimes they're small things, which is just the polishing of the statue. A dozen years ago, when my marriage failed, that was a big change. And I had a big piece missing of what I thought was me. And all I could see looking down was the rubble that was left over. And of course, my friend the ego was happy to step out and say, well, you deserved it. You had it coming. It's all your fault. You're a loser, and you're never going to recover. I hate that guy. <laughs> but I realized after I sat there for a long time and listened to him that I wasn't going anywhere, and I wasn't shaping who I needed to be. And I picked myself up and got back in the race. We need to use these tools to help define who we are. You've probably heard this guy and maybe wanted to choke him, but the one who says, you know, we don't have problems. They're opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> but this isn't one of the ego's lies. This is actually the ultimate truth. The things that come to our lives as problems are the things we use to shape who we are. It helps us identify these pieces that need to be taken away, that are not our authentic self. We need these challenges. The problems don't come into our lives to break us, but to shape us, to help us identify the pieces that need to go away. Embrace the idea that we remove everything but our perfect self. If you embrace that, you can embrace your